All right. Thank you, Leroy. So, welcome everyone to Saturn in Sagittarius Part 2. And uh, tonight we're going to look at houses 9 through 12. Before we get started, of course, a few housekeeping slides. And thank you very much for um, listening through these. You can study astrology with us three different ways. You can attend our free weekly audio podcast, listen to those. You can subscribe to our Astro Library and you can purchase one of our multimedia course segments. Here's more information on the Astro Library. We have three different sections of material by subject matter, a dozen years of material that we've collected with myself and other evolutionary astrologers. You may subscribe for one month, six months, 12 months, or you may do a monthly recurring that you can cancel at any time. Our multimedia course currently consists of three different segments. You can see them on your screen. And it comes with uh, study materials and a binder. Some, all of them have anywhere between, oh gosh, I'm thinking it's like 24 to 28 hours of DVDs. Segments one and two, Jeffrey transcript. And of course, all of our archived materials as well. And segment one is now available completely online. The segments with materials are 300 each segment plus shipping, but if you just do segment one online, it is just $200 and you still get all of the same information and materials just online. All right, so here is our subject matter tonight again, Saturn and Sagittarius transiting through houses 9 through 12. Here are the dates that Saturn is in Sag. You can see that it is about three years with the exception of three months between June and September when it will retrograde back into Scorpio this year. Here are the retrograde dates for Saturn while it is in Sagittarius over the next three years. Saturn is retrograde typically about four months of the year. And you can see the degrees of each of these retrogrades if you want to take a look at this so you can tell whether or not you're going to have any planetary aspects three times with these Saturn retrogrades. Here is the chart of Saturn's ingress into Sagittarius when it moved in there, of course, zero degree Aries houses. It moved in December 23rd at 9.34 a.m. in the morning from Rapid City. For our purposes of class um, right now, though, we're not going to be looking at those faster-moving inner planets. We take them out of the picture, and we're working with the ones the planets that you see on the screen and the nodes that you see on the screen because these are the archetype to planets, excuse me, that Saturn will make aspects with during its passage through Sagittarius. Here is briefly just a couple of key phrases on Saturn and Sag. Our structure of consciousness turns philosophical. We try to look for deeper understandings to whatever house it's transiting through to whatever planetary aspects it's making in your natal chart. And in this case, as we look at these transit to transit aspects, Saturn and Stag is still trying to look for those deeper meanings and understandings. How does the right brain or intuition make sense of it all? So that structure of consciousness is about expanding and evolving as Saturn moves through Stag. And those societal and familial and religious standards of right wrong right wrong conduct all of that undergoes review and evaluation and evolution when Saturn's moving through Sag and of course we deal with truth versus lies in all areas of our life and just so that you're familiar with this when we look at the polarity to Sag which is Gemini both Gemini can be truth or lies, just as Sag can be truth or lies. 
and how that tends to show up with Sagittarius is when we're not standing in our truth or authenticity, we have this tendency to compensate. We um, make excuses or make amends or be something that we're essentially not in order to get along with others or be accepted in our society or, you know, toe the line with whatever some religious, you know, standard might be. And so Saturn's passage through Sag is really working to break free to deeper and deeper levels of truth within ourself on a personal level and then having personal truth expanding and searching for universal or timeless truth. So there has to be a good degree of willingness to change, to evolve, to do things differently than we have before. Sagittarius in the modalities or quality of action is mutable and that is its ability to just adapt and change. Of course Saturn through any sign of the zodiac is going to deal with gender issues, hormonal issues, and it's going to deal with the parent-child issues as well. Us as a parent, us as a child, past life energy in that regards, current life energy in that regards, and how that is all evolving in our world. Sagittarius is where we bring in sometimes too much of a good thing and we have lessons of excess that we have to learn how to um, tame down, balance out, learn how to say no, when is enough enough. We also because of the expansionary nature of Sag, can have lessons of loss in order to open up the space we are going to expand into. And that self-responsibility to balance all areas of life, again, this is because Sag can be too much of a good thing, too much of a party sign, and have a tendency to get into excess and go overboard. We learn to take the self-determination of Saturn and, and utilize it to focus. Sag sometimes can be all over the place. And if you look right here at this glyph right here with Sag, it's the arrow. This is Sag learning how to focus and put energy in the direction that is intuiting or perceiving to be the best direction to go versus being all over the place, Gemini polarity. Of course, involution comes along with Saturn wherever life isn't working. And when we have that by that Saturn transit house, it's we're, we're going to feel a loss of meaning. And that's how the involution will express itself through this Saturn transit. Um, we can be dealing with any Saturn transit issues of secure insecurity. And in Sag, Saturn will pretend like it's got it all together and it knows it all. And it doesn't want to have any weak link exposed. It doesn't want anybody to win the debate. Sag likes to have that last word. We deal with integrity principles versus exaggeration. Again, Sag can just, little, if little's good, more's better, and stories can become exaggerated to the point that they're outright lies, and the point that sometimes in distortions of Sagittarius, we're believing the lie. And there's authenticity versus compensations. I spoke on that just a little bit. Learning to, again, be your real self, be true to yourself, and stand in your truth as best as you understand it. Sagittarius will go through alienation lessons so that serve to, to break down how we have put things together so that we can reach for deeper meaning, larger understandings, expanding what we know. And both Sag and Gemini will bring up language and communication lessons. And Saturn in Sagittarius then is going to have an impact in all of us learning to communicate, speak, and write in ways to be understood 
and working through that languaging process to also hear the deeper meanings rather than just the words that are being said. And Saturn and how it deals with inner and outer security in Sag is going to be the evolution of security for all of us, no matter what house it's transiting through. And when Saturn's outer world doesn't work, it lends us towards the polarity Saturn, uh, the polarity of Saturn is, is moon, and it lends us to go inward for security rather than always just mm, trying to have security be what's physically there in that manifested world. So Saturn through Sag is again that evolution of security to take us to deeper levels of inner peace because of the inner security. Now here are all the aspects that Saturn is going to make while it's in Sagittarius to those outer planets and Jupiter and I've listed them in date order and I've colored them by planet kind of sorta. So you can look at those. We're going to go through these in more detail here as we look at the last four house transits of Saturn. Briefly, here's the health and wellness two slides on what Saturn um, co-rules with Jupiter in some cases or rules all on its own. We can be very familiar perhaps with the fact that Saturn rules the skin, that outer layer that holds everything together inside us. It rules the bones, the, the teeth, the spine, the vertebrae, this, all the whole skeletal structure and so the imbalances that can come with that. Saturn rules decay and death while Jupiter rules growth and expansion, Jupiter ruling Sag. And so sometimes Saturn's transit through Sagittarius, we can have the expansion of gross tumors, cysts. We can have things expand. And of course you can see co-ruling with Jupiter, the pituitary gland, the master gland, the thyroid, the prostate, Saturn rules, issues of crystallization, where we're frozen or paralyzed. It rules depression. It has a co-rulership with depression along with Neptune and Pisces. Saturn is depression on a more conscious level. Neptune, Pisces, 12th house is more of a deeper depression that operates a little bit below the surface for us. Saturn has rulership of calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and it is the outer layer of the root chakra. So it rules the whole elimination process. Saturn and Sag, again, imbalances in the orbs of the pancreas, thyroid, pituitary gland, prostate, liver, sciatic nerve. Pancreas, liver, sciatic nerve are all Jupiter ruled um, parts of the body, let's say that. <laughs> and again, um, Saturn can bring imbalances in those areas while it while it moves through Sag. There's always a switching between left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain. I'm confused. I can't figure it out. I get all jumbled up with all my information. Sometimes we just gotta step back, take a really deep breath, and have a long walk in nature so we can allow the intuitive function to operate. So Saturn and Sag, we can see an increase in absent-mindedness or being accident-prone or having issues with our balance. Jupiter rules the assimilation process of any and all nutrients. And with the thyroid co-ruling that whole metabolism. And of course, I said the liver issues you can see on your screen, prostate issues. Um, and so because um, the prostate is regulated with zinc and silica, Jupiter has rulership of those minerals. And the last thing you can see, as I've already spoken, excess growths of all kinds. So it doesn't mean each and every one of us will have imbalances in those areas, but 
it's quite possible to see some of these things happening for us as Saturn makes this transit or as I said earlier um, I think in the first through fourth houses the buzz mineral now is magnesium and they're finding that it may be the root cause to a lot of manifestations of disease and so making sure that we have enough magnesium in our diet is um, out there, satch. We're, we're becoming aware of this and how what a big issue it is and how our soils are so deficient that we're deficient in many minerals but magnesium seems to really be having a strong effect on everybody in the lack of it. My favorite picture is Saturn and of course here we are when we start looking at Saturn and Sag moving through the ninth house this is the Sag related house so you can see right here that this is the interchangeable archetype so everything that I've just spoken about is Saturn and Sag is active with a transit in the ninth house here you can see Saturn in Sag and then excuse me in the ninth house the waning semi square to Pluto the waning sesqui squadrates to Uranus and of course when we look at the grand trine we've got fire signs and fire houses when we look at this Saturn transit and again I will say as we start to work our way through this this is very generic material this is bullet point material these are ideas you're going to have to take into consideration the evolutionary state of consciousness within the soul. You're also going to have to take into consideration their environmental conditionings as well as their natal chart. And as we look at these transit to transit aspects that are going on in these houses, what's making aspects to their natal chart? what is the individual things that are going on in their world it won't be the same for all of us and so you take this information and you use it as a starting point that you then explore with and so as I said when Saturn in Sag is transiting through the ninth house it's all of the above it is learning to really come from right brain consciousness Saturn that structure of consciousness it has to surrender or embrace a more intuitive consciousness going through the ninth house there will of course be language and communication lessons somebody could go back to school somebody could become a teacher somebody could have some speaking abilities come through there could be travel that starts to go on with all that ninth house information perhaps somebody gets a new job that requires them to travel you have to understand self responsibility from a broad perspective hey no more excuses doesn't matter what my reality or circumstances are I'm the one who has co-created it with source energy so I have to be responsible for myself and I just have to make peace with that there needs to be the focusing and achieving remember Sag mutable modality can sometimes be all over the place and just float around or always be looking for the um, where the grass is greener and the other pasture and so Saturn in Sag with this house transit is going to have to focus they're going to have to apply some of that willpower and self-determination and in, in order to focus on achieving whatever goals they perceive they want at this time and of course evolution of right wrong standards of conduct evolutions of the structure of your belief systems any of these words we've been talking about over all of these Saturn and Sag classes is true right here in this ninth house now the semi square with Pluto in Capricorn moving through the tenth house again that evolution of self-determination 
and what can happen here is perhaps we might lose our focus we might lose the meaning of our career we could have waning semi square some career crisis going on of some sorts trying to make sense of career um, with this ninth house transit we could lose the career we could be set free ninth house from the career and we don't want to be set free there needs to be some surrender with whatever career changes are upon us this deeper meaning with um, Pluto and Capricorn in the tenth house Pluto's got a double archetype signature here the soul is really having to take charge of its life and Saturn and Sag could go into some avoidance tendencies or you know just float not focus not pay attention just I just want to have fun I don't want to grow up and you're going to have to have a maturation with your position in your world wherever it's at whatever social positions familiar positions that you are in the midst of and you're going to have to make the again efforts to, to mature rather than just wanting to take it easy or chill or you know go play you know there's there's going to have to be a balance between work and play with this Saturn Pluto aspect now Uranus is going to be in Aries and it's also going what we have going on here when we look at this is what you will have is the either somebody's going to be a Pisces or an Aries rising and all the planets are in a sign and the sign matches the house so Uranus Aries first house Pluto cap 10th this is going to be true all the way across unless the houses are really wide or small it can shift with the houses and then you're gonna to have to listen to the class before the class or the session before the session after and blend those houses um, but Uranus and Aries is going to be in the first house and so there could be you know identity crises going on who am I and how do I relate to my larger world how do I relate to my social environments you know how do I relate to the bigger picture of everything that's going on in my life and of course Uranus dealing with liberation Aries initiation being the group of one there could be alienation wounds that occur and then they're really to just help you step back and break free from any limitations to your understandings of the world and yourself and your place in it Saturn Sag ninth house and if we move through that alienation process then what we can reach for is in real deep healings within ourselves on a very personal level we can we can break free we can have the freedom that Saturn Sag ninth wants and we can be at peace with ourselves. we can you know come to new understandings of who we are and I'm okay and I'm okay to be different from someone else so we're gonna have to find ourselves in some way through the Saturn Uranus aspects that are going on with this these house placements and of course the grand fire trine again fire signs firehouses creative dynamos or lessons of excess we have to have this deeper sense of knowing ourself otherwise what we'll find is Jupiter can go into the dramas and the excess around love and Jupiter and Leo it in the fifth this is about finding a deep inner love and then that's going to help balance out this sense of self and the new creativity that wants to come out of us 
and we'll find our role and place in society with it. So we've got to watch going overboard and we've got to really open up to some of those deeper levels of self-love and then we can have, again, this is who I am, this is what I'm here to do, this is how I'm a part of my world, Saturn Sag Ninth House, and this is the creativity I'm meant to take place with, or do. Now here we are, Saturn, making the last quarter squares to Neptune and Chiron in Pisces 12th, and Jupiter makes the last quarter squares to Saturn, and Jupiter's here, Virgo 6th, and we also then will have Saturn square the nodes. And I drew this chart, just picked the date, summer solstice, and lo and behold, they were all within orb, within degrees of influence. We'll have Saturn square the nodes probably, uh, I haven't looked it up specifically, but I'm thinking it's quite possible Saturn square the nodes for about six months. So we're all going to have to look at skip steps with self-responsibility and wanting to really go into the victimization, which as you can see with this house transit, sign house matchup. So Saturn's last quarter squares to Neptune and Chiron. We're going to need to be healing old sadomasochistic wounds. I'm the victim. I'm being victimized. We're going to have to have a crisis if we're re-imprinting victimization and what it's going to do is work to make us more conscious of where we have these deep wounding patterns. We want to really be um, making an effort to do some deep spiritual searching, to find our purpose in life, to find value and meaning in life. And of course, we're going to get asked to let go of any illusions. We're going to be asked to let go of anything that is no longer working or functioning in our life. And that, again, that can make us feel quite um, groundless. You know, I, I can't, my life has no meaning. Um, where are you, source energy? We could feel somewhat abandoned by source. And it's not necessarily the case. It's just asking us to really deepen our understandings and to let go of illusion, delusion, let go of old separating desires, let go of the fluff, let go of what's not real for us. Jupiter, as it makes the last quarter squares to Saturn, it's going to really be working upon issues of self-improvement. This is going to be Jupiter moving into Virgo and moving into the sixth house with this transit. So the self-improvement key words of the sixth house. Um, there could be opportunities to become a healer or a shaman or we may be in need of seeing healers and shamans in some way. There could be some possible health issues that could go on here. Jupiter double signature Virgo 6 and Saturn is going to try and make sense of it. Every one of the things that I teach with health and wellness astrology is that every physical manifestation of an imbalance has emotions behind it and usually emotional imbalances. And behind the wounded or distorted emotions are mental imbalances. And behind the mental imbalances are spiritual imbalances. And all spiritual imbalances are a disconnect with source energy. So when we look at Virgo 6th as the whole health issue and health crises, that miracle of magically healing via the polarity Pisces 12th house, it's really making a spiritual reconnection to source. It's making a spiritual um, leap of growth and understanding. And then that trickles down into the mind and the mental patterns, and that trickles down into the emotions with greater emotional peace and interconnectedness, and the physical imbalance then removes itself. 
that is actually also the essence of the other work that I do, the energetic balancing work. Um, and when I discovered it, I already had this spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, you know, connection, both imbalances and healings going on. So I was like, I get it. We now have technology that can go right to the energetic level and measure a physical imbalance before it's manifested. Put out the balancing frequencies to that and have the imbalance go away, we don't even know it, or have it come out as a healing crisis as it leaves because it's no longer supported energetically. If you, I'm sorry, I've got an, uh, off on a track on this, but you know this is Jupiter's domain with this house transit when it moves into Virgo sixth house, but it's going to be there for all of us. If you if you want any information on that, I um, encourage you to contact me. Uh, or go to AIM, A-I-M, energeticbalancing.com, which is our website for this other work. Leroy does that one with me, too. <laughs> and so um, we're, it, this Jupiter square to Saturn, it, it really is about moving past the mental worry war crises and being able to make peace with your circumstances, being able to settle into deeper understandings so that you feel a sense of meaning and purpose in your life. Now this is going to be a lot of what's going to happen when Saturn squares the notes as well. There can be a skipping back and forth between the victim and the victor, all the sadomasochistic extremes. And so there's going to be a need to make an effort to heal our old spiritual wounds, to heal physical wounds. We could bounce back and forth between our intuition being sharp or very confused. Saturn square the node, structure of consciousness wants it in black and white, and it's not going to be in black and white with South Node Pisces, 12th, and North Node um, Virgo, 6th. So again, that switching that can go on between left brain, right brain, the cycling back and forth between confusion and clarity. We're going to have to make an effort for Jupiter, Virgo, or excuse me, North Node, Virgo, 6th. We want to be making efforts to grow, to reach toward improving ourselves however necessary. And as we make that effort, then what we can do is metamorphose those spiritual wounding into spiritual leaps of growth in our world. Leaps of growth in understanding and feeling a, a strong sense of inner peace. Okay, so looking, um, this is my material for Saturn and Sag, ninth house. Just going to check in. Any comments or questions with anything that I've said from anybody? And it looks to be quiet. I'm not seeing the hand, so I don't know if the hand comes out when somebody starts typing or not, but I'm sensing quiet no just uh, uh, just one comment from from a student out there that uh, mm -hmm. if you could show the chart a little more often uh, than the page with the with the sure. talking points you know just just so that they sure. can read it into the chart a little bit I yep. think that's a that's a fair comment you know but um, yep. it's yep. all good and I don't see any other raised hands on the board other than that one comment Kim okay yeah, I can easily go back and forth and do that. So here we have Saturn in Sagittarius transiting through the 10th house. And as you can see, we're going to have an interchangeable archetype between with Saturn transiting through its own house, the 10th house. Oh, and I've been forgetting. In this case, we're going to have the passive polarity. We're going to have cardinal modality and the element of Earth. Okay. And so you can see how this starts to bring a you know stronger Saturn influence when it's moving through its own house. It too, though, will be oh, here's the charts. 
All right, now I'll go back and forth to them. Here's Saturn in the 10th. Here's how it's going to make the waning semi squares to Pluto cap in the 11th. Waning sesqui squadrates to Uranus in Aries in the 2nd. And then we'll have the grand trine in fire in the Earth houses. Okay, all right. And so, uh, just like Saturn transiting ninth house Sag, all of the above. Everything that we have been speaking about here during these Saturn classes is going to be activated with Saturn Sag 10th house. Saturn might try to be a little more controlling here because we're blending Sag in 10th house. However, all of these Sagittarian archetypes are still going to be valid in regards to what we've been speaking about. With this transit, there is a need to get real with career and self-responsibility. We're really going to have to f have a sense of focus on a, 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 a sense of focus in life. Again, that tenth house self-determination, self-responsibility, taking charge of your world, and and doing it from a right brain, intuitive level with Sag. And if there are things in our world that no longer function for us, that no longer make sense, we need to let them go. Leroy and I, I have this, this is my house transit with Saturn. And um, over the course of this winter, we decided to clean out my office. Back in the heydays of Pluto and Sag, I had a full-time assistant. Everything is so much in the cloud now. Everything has gone so digitized now. Um, I no longer have that assistant. We finally cleaned out one half of my office, moved Leroy into it, and turned his office back into our exercise area. And so I've been letting go of old paperwork. I've been sorting through things and just, nope, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. And so now I'm getting the I now I know where I got the idea and said I'm gonna change this. Leroy didn't get much choice about moving his office. <laughs> I says, I'm doing this, honey. This is just what's happening. <laughs> and I think he likes it now that we've done it. He's got a lot more room and space. <laughs> He's not in a cold corner anymore. There can be familial lessons that you have to go through when Saturn is transiting through the 10th house. What's your responsibility? What's happening for you? What we have going on, and excuse me for giving another example with my life again, and thank you for letting me do that, is um, we've had, a, I've had, uh, the loss of three ants over the last little, I think it was thir in 13 months, I lost three ants, both my mom and dad's side of the family, and um, had to release my cat, my beloved 15-year-old black and white cat. I, and then I had a brother-in-law that got in a car accident, a serious accident, and he walked away with just six stitches on the side of his head, lucky. But what it did is it started this whole process with my mom and dad of opening up to us. We've known on broad levels, you know, retired farmers, land, um, and a, you know, a trust with it. And we've known that us three girls and the oldest of three would take over it. But all of a sudden, now my folks are like, here's this paperwork, here's that paperwork. Here's how much the, the, you know, they're starting to go into all of these details about the family estate. And so here I am, you know, working with Leroy on taking on the responsibility of all this. And so not waiting until something happens to know where the will is, where the, the, um, trust papers are, where blah, 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 blah. And so that's my example of Saturn in, in the 10th house is, is the shift of my parents opening up to, to all three of us. But um, as the eldest daughter, they're really making sure that I'm in the loop on all kinds of stuff. And so 
there's the responsibility factor that's coming through. So there's two examples for you. The letting goes I've been having to do with paperwork in the office and the family members. There's also with this transit the evolution of security because Saturn 10th going to want to have that outer control and that polarity. Fourth house, there has to be an evolution of inner security and being okay in your world, feeling a sense of security deepening for yourself. Now, Pluto Capricorn in the 11th, and here, let me go back to you. Here's the waning semi squares with Pluto Capricorn in the 11th. I actually have Pluto in the 12th already, but we're going to. Uh, purposes here. We're going to look at it this way. Okay. Um, here you can have old work traumas come up. Pluto's in Capricorn. Saturn's in the tenth house. So you can again old work traumas, old familial responsibilities, and any traumas around that can open up for you. And you've got to make an effort to be able to detach from circumstances, Capricorn, and and take an objective look at everything and what makes sense and if something doesn't let it go make the change 11th house signature here with Pluto there's going to be that need to have some liberation from trauma liberation from responsibilities if it presents itself as what is necessary sometimes that detachment with this Pluto cap signature is going to say Oh, this is your responsibility, and you're not going to be able to sag avoid it anymore. Saturn, suppress it, ignore it. No, you have to to take on the responsibility. So it can go either way. There's a need to find a higher purpose to life. This is the Sag coming in with all of this because sometimes when Pluto's transiting the 11th house, it brings an acceleration process of change and metamorphosis. But there also then is that tendency to want to be stuck in order to feel secure. And when we can sense the larger purpose to things, it makes it easier to make the changes that are necessary. There can, of course, be creative inspirations here with 11th house polarity to the to the fifth wanting to put that into practice however necessary however it is perceived to be um, best to do so and of course the famous reality checks Pluto's in Capricorn Saturn's in the tenth and this Saturn Sag can you know just want the you know I want all the glory but I don't want to do any of the work so to speak sometimes and so there can be the reality checks that come around with that now with Uranus Aries here is the waning Susky squadrate okay the waning square and a half Saturn to Uranus Aries in the second house here we're going to have the evolution of our values around resources, the evolution of career values, 10th to 2nd. And even though by sign it looks like trines, it's going, Saturn is in process of going through three of these waning Susky squadrates to Uranus and Aries. We had the first one in November, December, and the next two will come later this summer. Um, and so there's a lot of crises to evolve value systems in these areas. We could have um, that good old alienation, especially from our social position, Saturn 10th. And its purpose then is going to have us deepening our self-reliance deepening our sense of self, deepening our ability to know that we can survive and we can flourish beyond survival. We can take care of ourselves. So there could be the whole effect of self-determination that's going to be in process here because while Saturn, excuse me, while Uranus is in Aries, it's in the second house here. 
And so there can be some inertia that counterbalances that Aryan energy. And so the waning Susky Squadrate may be the crises to act, to move, to take charge of one's life, to be in the world, be real in the world, to pay attention to our physical world, um, earth houses, rather than the fire signs just running around it. Now here's the grand trine, okay? Jupiter is in Leo in the 6th, Saturn Sag 10th, Uranus Aries 2nd. So we're mixing fire and earth. So what we have is the ability to achieve goals, physical manifestations to any degree that we're willing to make the effort. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't evolve our goals. We definitely could see with the fire signs in earth houses the evolution of what is important to us. There may need to be a balancing out between um, workaholism or laziness. What we might, oops, this way, what we could have going on here, we could have all the excitability of the fire energy and just really getting into overworking. Got to do this, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that. And sometimes we're just going to have to be able to rest earth houses and take a little break. We have to balance out the working. And if we're going to get into the laziness of the trine, we can have the fire signs with all the ideas, but there's never any effort made. And then we're going to fall into the distortions of all of the materialization of the work, the career, the resources, then they could just dissipate or um, we could lose things. If we go into, you know, lessons of excess with the resources, if we go into getting overexcited and overspending, we could wake up and surprise ourselves with debt. We could, again, lose things that have manifested because we're not making the effort in achieving or um, achieving or earning, you know, anything on that manifested plane. So you could, again, extremes of workaholism, but the extremes of laziness and inertia, and I just, I don't want to do anything. The ideas are all here, but oh, I just don't know if I can make the effort. I, I think I, you know, somebody just wants to go play could be the situation. And again, not, these are not absolutes. You just need to play with this and see how this works in an actual life. And so um, here is the Saturn 10th house transit with the last quarter squares to Chiron, Neptune, and Pisces, first house. Here is Jupiter, Virgo, 7th, last quarter square, Saturn in the 10th. And of course, when Saturn is squaring the nodes, that can happen right here in the first seventh. And so, looking at Saturn's last quarter squares to Neptune and Chiron, there can be a loss of identity with this first house, and there could be a loss of the social positions, tenth house, going on. Who am I? And it can just be there's there's a loss of meaning maybe we have a social position out there in the world and it doesn't satisfy us anymore it doesn't make sense to us anymore so we have to have a real deepening and evolving sense of ourself and so we may have these isolation and alienation lessons to deepen up a relationship with ourselves Saturn Sag 10th house, again, we could have all kinds of responsibilities with our family, with work, perhaps with social positions, and we just want to run away and escape. I need to rest. Pisces, with myself, 
first house. Sometimes the isolation alienation is because we have to recognize we're more than our outer position in the world. We're more than resources that we have accumulated in our world. And if we buying into false sense of self, this can happen right here, that ability of not being able to look deeply at self. We, you know, could have the letdowns with our world making sense because we've got to learn to get into the truth and honesty and authenticity of who we really are. Now, Jupiter making the last quarter squares to Saturn. This is going to be able, an ability to really look at our relating patterns. You know, seventh house is compare and contrast with others. And Jupiter is going to be looking at that and going, what's working, what's not working? Jupiter in this um, spot right here in the seventh house, whoops, sorry, I'm going the wrong direction. Jupiter could be over sacrificing itself in relationships doing too much for the other, giving too much for the other, that Virgo energy that just can be into atonement or woundedness and so we can overdo the giving and then we get angry. This is where this T-square will start to operate with these three planets and so Jupiter here is going to have to take on responsibility for healthy boundaries in giving and receiving. The other potential that could happen here is you could really see some relationship healings come through. There could be efforts to um, improve self, self-improvement with the partner, you know, perhaps learning how to be um, devotional to the partner in healthy ways, in healing ways. But definitely learning to have healthy boundaries and both parties learning to have self-responsibility. Jupiter 7th house square to the 10th house Saturn. Possible the partner could have health issues going on. Jupiter Virgo, whoops, I keep going the wrong way. Jupiter Virgo in the 7th house here. Now, here's Saturn square the nodes. It'll be a lot of these same archetypes that we were just speaking to. We're going to hit we could have responsibility struggles. Again, doing too much or doing too little. We're going to have to look at lessons between ourself and others and balancing that out. Healthy boundaries. Okay? In other words, Saturn up here, it's, it's going to have to balance between us and others. It's going to have to balance out the giving and the receiving. Someone could fall on a too selfish end, first house, play the victim to um, control and be selfish in distortions. This could, again, the overgiving could happen here with this Saturn square the nodes. So there's going to have to be healthy boundaries between self and others. There's going to have to be both parties learning how to be self-responsible in their world however they need to. Sometimes we're going to need to make more of an effort and yep, the all the escapism tendencies. Sometimes there's going to be a balance between if somebody's falling on the selfish end, south node here in the first, they're going to have to make the effort. And if somebody else does too much giving, they're going to have to back off and uh, be responsible with themselves. Escapism tendencies. Saturn, Sag, 10th. This is being real, but Sag will start to counter influence this a little bit, Pollyanna attitudes, um, just glossing over the surface or doing compensations and not taking on your responsibilities with others and what it's healthy for you. And so 
this is going to create skip steps with Saturn and responsibility if this is what comes through. And there's going to need to make the effort, resolution node, north node, to be real, to be honest with partners in relationship. Who's responsible for what? Where are the healthy boundaries? And of course, you can have the potential to heal old relationship imbalances. With Jupiter, or excuse me, with that North Node, well, Jupiter will be there too, but with the North Node Virgo 7th, there could be old wounds in relationships that could be brought to the surface and worked upon to heal. There could be old past life relationships that might surface through to work with for a while. Again, perhaps the partner has a health issue and the Saturn transit soul is going to have to make the effort in helping them with healing. You know, that good old uh, in sickness and in health thing that we say in uh, religious marriage ceremonies, there may be some of that in a natural law way in which we might have to help that other person out to some degree. All right, so that's going through the material with this Saturn Sag 10th house transit. Comments, questions? I will guess I'll ask one on behalf of the board, Kim. Can you uh, talk about that mm -hmm. Saturn square the nodes uh, in, in being in that 10th house, of course, how about guilt? Would that be if these lessons remain oh, yeah. unlearned? It, good one. Good one. I have not, yeah, the conditioned guilt. I haven't been speaking about that. There could be that, definitely that signature. There could be some degree of it with Saturn in Satch because conditioned guilt belongs with Saturn. It gets more emphasized here in the 10th house. And if there's conditioned guilt with this square, not only the T-square with Jupiter, and Neptune with Saturn, but also Saturn square the nodes. If there's an excess of the condition guilt, the Saturn transit party could go overboard with doing in a relationship, or it could go into the escapism tendencies. The natural guilt, it would be what is yours to do and heal in this relationship. And when you do that, how does it bring about healing to your own wounds of the past? And that is your guilt factor. I can't believe I forgot guilt as I've been talking about Saturn. <laughs> oh, well, add that into the whole picture story here. Um, I'll touch upon it when I do the, do the Saturn retrograde in Sag class. <laughs> But yes, you can have either the conditioned guilt or the natural guilt. And you really have to watch the tendency when you have Saturn in Sag with Virgo Pisces nodes because we've, we've, there's so much conditioned guilt on planet Earth that we really have to have a discerning ability around what's our guilt and what's not our guilt. Yes, good factor, good good comment to bring that in. So, as we look at Saturn in Sagittarius moving through the 11th house, it brings in the interchangeable archetype with Uranus and Aquarius. And it's the act of polarity, it is the cardinal modality, and it is the element of air. And so here is your first um, chart as you look at it. Here's Saturn transiting through the 11th. Pluto cap's going to be in the 12th, and this is going to be the waning semi-squares. And Saturn to Uranus, the waning sesquisquadrates. This is going to be Saturn in um, the um, um, third house in Aries. And here is going to be the grand trine in fire signs and air houses, okay, as we look at that. My Saturn in the 
10th is in the tail end of the 10th house, so this is actually where my transiting planets are at, other than Saturn. Saturn's going to catch up to it here after this next retrograde. So when we have this Saturn Sag in the 11th house transit, this is where we are making whatever's unconscious conscious. Saturn, structure of individuated consciousness. So Saturn is going to be bringing up all kinds of unconscious wounds and traumas that we will want to make an effort to have a larger understanding around, that we're going to want to make an effort to heal. And the degree to which we can Sag 11th house, detach, look at the larger picture, that's the degree to which we can have an understanding of wounds and traumas and work to then heal them. Saturn being Saturn, though, what we have to be careful of with this house transit is while the 11th house is trying to make things conscious, Saturn always has a tendency to want to try and suppress and push it back down. So this is, this is almost like Saturn and Uranus going back and forth with each other. 11th house throwing it into the surface up to the surface into consciousness Saturn avoiding it pushing it back down pretending like it didn't notice what it you know what the message was wanting to just carry on in order to be secure fixed houses Saturn in Saturn in the fixed houses is, is going to really bring up that need to be secure to have everything be steady eddy now, there can be an acceleration of the consciousness evolving. There can be an acceleration process of being able to understand things on larger and larger and larger pictures as we go through this transit. Of course, there can be the creative inspirations. 11th house, Sag. And one of the deepest things that we'll want to do with this Saturn transit is as we're not suppressing, as we're working to heal old traumas and wounds, we really want to have the courage to become who we authentically are, Sag. We want to really have a liberation of ourself in our world. Now, Pluto, when it makes these last, these, these semi-squares, Saturn makes the semi-squares to Pluto. Pluto cap is going to be in the 12th house to Saturn Sag in the 11th. And here we're going to be asked to let go of realities that are no longer working for us. We may go through disillusionment with dreams and goals and even with career Capricorn, Saturn, in, in Sa uh, Cap Pluto and Capricorn, and dealing with the Saturn archetype. So there could still be, you know, we could include career in here as well as dreams and goals and desires. We want to um, have a breaking free from old responsibilities. Pluto, Capricorn, in the 12th. This is letting go of what's no longer real in your world, letting go of what's no longer working, letting go of old desires, letting go of old responsibilities that are not yours. And so this waning semi-square, while there's a very strong spiritualization process to it, it's... Um, balsamic phase here between these two, okay? Um, there's a lot of letting go and breaking free. Breaking free again, 11th house, Saturn, Sag, to be who you really are. This could be including of the guilt too, okay? Pluto Capricorn 12th, we could have conditioned guilt in here, we could have some natural guilt in here to make amends for, and this is Saturn 
being able to recognize that and break free of the conditioned guilt and recognize where it's responsible with any natural guilt and make amends for it as best as possible. But there also will need to be, and I put this in here, peace with the manifestations of what is or the lack thereof. Okay? This Pluto cap transit, you know, this when we let go of the disillusionment or disappointment, then what is real? What is in my world? What is manifesting in my world? And can I make peace with where I'm at in my world? Can I make peace with my social positions with my soul? Can I make peace with what is truth for me? Can I make peace with my manifestations or the lack thereof because it's not what is highest and best for my own soul? Now here's the waning sesky squares, sesky squadrates, Saturn to Uranus, fire signs, um, air houses. Of course there will be communication lessons. There could be some possible self-identity issues, okay, because sometimes that third house can get so busy doing it doesn't stop to breathe and go, wait a minute, am I in touch with me and myself? There's going to be a need to break free from old patterns, whether they're beliefs, Saturn and Sag, or thoughts, Uranus in the third house there could be some busyness issues that go on. Um, Uranus here in Aries in the third house, there can be so much popping up into consciousness, okay? We can just become busybodies and not want to look at anything. We've got a double Uranus 11th house signature going on with these aspects. And so sometimes instead of all that busyness and excitability of fire signs, third house. Sometimes we need to calm down, we need to breathe, we need to take the more deeper detached look and go, what's the reality of my everyday world? What's my mental circular thinking? How do I need to shift that? What are the old mental patterns that I need to let go of? What are old beliefs that I need to let go of? How do I break free? and think differently? How do I communicate differently? How do I process differently? The um, truth versus lies is going to come up here because Uranus in Aries is in the third house. So crises may come over something that we thought was a truth and it's turned out to be false or limited in our world. Does it make sense to us anymore? Can we let it go? Can we break free from it? There will be adaptability lessons. There will be freedom lessons and issues with this. We could have a situation here with this Saturn transit and if we're coming into this grand trine right here right now we could we could want all of the um, comforts of relationship commitments while at the same time we want our freedoms and so how are we going to balance that need for freedom or the sense of just feeling free with ourself and our relationships and friendships, all of the communications therein. So there's going to be, you know, a need to have some real honest communications with self and with others to find authenticity, to find what's real for us, to find what works for us and the partner. You know, fire and air could get all stirred up here. Um, with this grand trine into excitability or exaggerations or lies or all of that sad stuff. So here I've got stirring things up, going overboard, and that need to find a mental calmness, air houses, to find that inner peace, 
so that we can have a sense of balance in our world. And that balance may actually be movement itself. Okay, we've got all three air houses, but we have mutable air, cardinal air, fixed air here looking at these houses. And so this is where some where I'm saying that, that this balance needs to come through of an inner mental peace and self-honesty. And then translating that into outer peace with others and outer honesty with others. Um, one of the other things I had at, in here in the, in the Grand Trine is we could we ha might have to watch the tendency or distortion of allowing others to have too much impact in our world. This is air houses, okay, and this, you know, Saturn and Sag, if Saturn and Sag is not finding its own inner truth, inner authority, deeper understandings. Saturn and Sag can project out there onto the teacher or spiritual gurus. And we could do this with this grand trine and fire signs air houses. We could think that everybody else's word is more important than our own. And so where are we learning to trust our own intuition and our own gut in communications with others as well? And are we listening deeply and hearing what's being said beyond words? Are others hearing what we say beyond words? So here we are with the Saturn 11th house transit moving into Saturn making the last quarter squares to Chiron, Neptune, Pisces, second house, and then Jupiter, Virgo, eighth, making the last quarter squares to Saturn. And then, of course, Saturn square the nodes in Virgo, eighth, excuse me, Pisces, second. So looking at Saturn last quarter squares to Chiron in Neptune, we could have traumas surface and potential for healings around resources. This is Chiron, Neptune, and Pisces second. Letting go of old value systems, addressing survival fears, deepening our self-values. Here is Neptune, Chiron, Pisces, second. So again, there could be crises around our values. We could have disillusionment around our values with resources. We could have resources that just slip away from us. We could also, if we learn to see source energy, Pisces, Neptune here, if we learn to see source as the deepest resource, all right, this last quarter square, crises in consciousness, could be learning to trust source on some of the deepest levels possible in bringing to us what we need and desire as we need and desire it. That ability to detach Saturn in the 11th house and see the larger picture around ourself and our resources. So it's not only about seeing source energy as the ultimate resource, okay? It's being able to see ourself as a resource as well. Is all this stuff important to us? And it can go either direction. It may be that there are resources we need to release but there also may be the, the gift of resources that are an outer reflection of an inner value that I'm worthy of in some way, or this is of value to me in, 
you know, some way as we look at that. Um, y you know, I'm just, you know, trying to think of, of some <laughs> examples here, you know, as we start to get older, Saturn, that aging process, it could have been that when we were younger, Pisces second, you know, resources maybe weren't that important to us. And as we're getting older, it's becoming a deepening value. I want to have a little bit of comfort in my old age. I want to have a retirement account in my old age. There could be a crisis around recognizing we don't have that. And can we deepen that spiritualization process to trust source then to bring to us what we do need as we move through an aging process in our world? Um, the Jupiter last quarter squares confrontations eighth house confrontate confronting any changes that may be necessary in our relationships addressing that inner and outer criticism where do relationships need to evolve and heal whoops did it again so here's the Jupiter signature the last quarter crises here this could be just crises in relationship commitment and the trauma of perhaps our partner saying, I'm no longer committed to you. And the trauma that may bring to us. Or the partner says, this needs to change in the relationship. I'm not willing to put up with this anymore. And we've got to be able to detach and de look at a larger picture, deeper understanding of how some of our old relating patterns are no longer working, Jupiter, last quarter square Saturn, growth and decay, how some old relating patterns are no longer working and where each party in the relationship is needing to make changes. We could also, Jupiter Virgo, just as the seventh house, uh, Jupiter Virgo 8th, it may be that the partner could have some healing crises that goes on that we would need to address and, and learn to heal, learn to devote to the other, learn to take care of the partner. This stuff is going to go on with both the Saturn in the 10th and the 11th transits as this puts Jupiter Virgo in 7th and 8th. So what are the confrontations that you need in committed relationships? If you are single and you don't have relationships going on, there could still be confrontations perhaps with some who are close to you. There could be confrontations with friendships perhaps. Or Saturn, maybe something with familial uh, family members is going on and somebody confronts or shocks you with something that you thought was okay within the family and poof you know all of a sudden you know fighting over the the resources within the family that could be one with the Jupiter Saturn last quarter square the po a possibility with or without relationships is fighting with family members over the over the resources if there are familial resources and working your way through that. Now, it doesn't have to be the total distortion of fighting over the resources. It could be, you know, healing energy around that. One of the things that my parents are very good at with three girls, if they do one thing for one daughter or they do something for the other daughter, they're always trying to balance out things with their children and their family and I still have Jupiter in this this um, um, seventh house but you can I think you can see this example right here um, my family the, the the healing energy of the Virgo with my parents they do everything they can to be fair and honest and sharing all the collective resources with their three daughters equally and in my world, my parents just gifted us furniture because they had given the two, uh, the other two girls, they had given them money 
in helping buying new vehicles. And Leroy and I, well, I won't go into the details. The, the, in order to make it fair, uh, they just said, here, Kim and Leroy, new furniture. I have a new dining room table, Robin. <laughs> And so it won't always be fighting. It can also be being very giving and sharing as well in regards to this from the healing perspective and the equality perspective. Now, Saturn in the 11th, having the square to the nodes, there can be a skipping back and forth between isolation and codependency and all of the traumas that can come around for that. So there's a need for detachment and being able to have an evolution of relationship intimacy and evolution. And so again, here would be South Node Pisces second. This could be the isolation. North Node Virgo eight. Here's the codependency. And there could be a skipping back and forth between this and not having a balance between self and valuing self and each partner being um, self-reliant in their commitments. And so Saturn is going to have to have some detachment here. It's going to have to be able to see the larger picture in whatever the relationship situations are that are going on, um, confronting any limitations in relationships if necessary, confronting any um, issues around resources, if necessary, with that. Um, there's going to be a need to let go of stubbornness and possible endings. These are the, the Saturn, the Saturn square, the nodes, and the Saturn T square, Jupiter, um, Neptune, fixed houses. There's going to be fixidity here. And those mutable signs are going to have to work to bring about change, evolution, adaptability. And so when it comes to relationships, we're going to have to watch stubbornness with these signatures and what needs to metamorphose. And of course, what could possibly come from this is relationship endings or making a new relationship commitment. And are we working with, again, self-responsibility on both ends? If it is a relationship ending, can we detach and have a larger understanding of what's come to the end of the road? Can we reach for deeper self-reliance that we can then try again in the world of relationships if it's the endings? And so, um, anything else with Saturn's transit through the 11th house that I haven't touched upon that you want me to look at? In that, in that uh, configuration there, Kim, is that... Is, Indeed, Jupiter, a resolution node? Yes. The north node is a resolution node in this particular Saturn nor nodal axis transit. Nine years from now, nine and a half years, because a nodal axis is makes a revolution through the zodiac once every 19 years. Nine years from now, Saturn will be in the opposite spot different signs and the south node to be the resolution node. Okay, but yes, the north node is the resolution node with the Saturn squares. And that's why there's going to be an effort to heal the past and move towards this north node wherever it is. And so this is why it, it could be not only relationship endings here, there could be relationship commitments as well that could come along and we want to if we're making a relationship commitment well either way endings or commitments you're going to want to make sure that each party is taking on responsibility for self because Saturn square the nodes is skip steps with responsibility 
skip steps with the maturation process, with self-determination. And with these house signatures, again, it can really um, create more codependency if both parties are not self-reliant. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, moving along, um, looking at our last Saturn in Sag, transiting through the 12th house. This is going to be an interchangeable archetype with Neptune and Pisces. We're looking at the passive polarity, we're looking at the mutable modality, and we're looking at water. And so we've got all, we've got three of the four elements going on here, so we're stirring things up in this case. But here's the charts, first chart, Saturn is here in the 12th house, and it's going to make waning semi-squares to Pluto Capricorn in the first. It's going to make waning sesqui squadrates to Uranus Aries in the fourth. And the Grand Trine is going to be fire, ho fire signs, water houses again. We're going to have everything in the water houses. And so when we're looking at Saturn Sag transiting the 12th house, uh, Saturn any sign, you have to let go of the old realities. You have to let go of old manifestations, what's no longer working. And so with Sag, Saturn is not only going to let go of the old stuff, but it also has to make peace with it. We have to have a deep spiritual search of why this is happening and why we're being required to let go of this. And can I surrender back to source energy? It's like the ultimate Saturn letting go is letting go of the body. And that doesn't mean that's going to happen every time Saturn transits the 12th house. Okay, um, But that ability to, to just let go of what doesn't function or work in our life and to make sense with it, to understand the why we need to let it go. And then Saturn in Sag in the 12th house, there's a conscious effort to deepen spiritual understanding. Sag 12th house, to deepen our belief systems as broadly as possible, to get to that universal, timeless understandings of truth as, as, as much as we can. And then we got to walk the talk. Saturn, manifestation. We can't just figure it out and understand it. We've then got to do something about it. We've got to walk what we know. There's a need to ground the intuition because, again, Sag Pisces or Sag 12th house, this is the mutable modality. And here's, here's, um, Conscious beliefs, here's unconscious beliefs. And so sometimes if we, we could get excited or we spark our intuition and it comes in the way that Saturn wants it to go in Sag, and we could have false intuition. We could um, be clinging to fantasies or illusions. So we're going to want to be making an effort to really ground the intuition in what's real Saturn. I mean, the kind of an opposite or, or a distortion in a similar area is we can have some real strong escapism tendencies here. Oh, I just want to party. I just want to check out. I just want to go have fun. Oh, I don't want to be real. I don't want to have to deal with Saturn's heaviness. Can I just ignore it? Can I just avoid it? And if we do that, we could find ourselves really getting the psychic two by four 
perhaps a physical two by four of slapping us back in our body and having to get real and having to make sense of our life and make peace with our life. You know, ultimately what we want to do with Saturn and Sag through the 12th house is have a renewed purpose in life. I'm figuring out my beliefs on the deepest levels possible. I'm figuring out how they make sense in my world and therefore how my world makes sense and I am energized to get ready to go forth and create a new in my world. Now looking at Pluto Capricorn and it's it, the Saturn's waning semi-square here's what I was saying before getting real with self and what one can do avoidance versus self responsibility so here's where we have to get real with ourselves. here's where we might have to face limitations in what we can and cannot do in our world Sag doesn't like boundaries and Saturn will sometimes give it boundaries and this is where we have to let go on some of the deepest levels possible and Saturn excuse me Pluto cap in the first this is self-responsibility on a deep soul level so what works in our world and what doesn't work in our world so this is where we've got to work through avoidance versus self-responsibility okay and Again, being willing, finding that effort to be responsible in whatever way is necessary. And that's going to give us the inner peace rather than some of the, um, you know, avoidances and getting slammed. We are rebirthing a sense of self. Remember Saturn Sag 12th, understanding the deepest meanings and values and beliefs we have in life and then from that how are we gonna go forward and create in the new ways how are we going to you know rebirth ourselves go forward with who we are how are we gonna grow up Pluto Capricorn in the first house and so we could look at having leadership possibilities come through that can happen through Saturn Sag in any of the houses figuring out how to be a teacher you know a spiritual leader um, this could this one could be some rebirthings of that and it could also have us wanting to learn how to walk a spiritual path we've been doing such deep spiritual searchings here that this is the new desire coming out of me I want my path on earth to have deep spiritual meanings maybe I want to commit to spirituality in some way in my world now Saturn will make waning sesky squadrates to Uranus in Aries fourth house and so here's the emotional traumas that can come up alright and also the healings what we can have here is two water houses going on we can have all the excitability of the air signs that come through. Uranus is going to want to make old emotional woundings conscious. Uranus in Aries fourth house could trigger emotional insecurities and that could have Saturn in a crisis over feeling quite ungrounded. So you're going to want to have some grounding with these waning squares it's also going to have us wanting to liberate emotionally letting go of the false emotional self 
and be real and authentic with our emotions. And they're both could both of these planets and these water houses could go through the emotional distortions and then both also have the potential to have the emotional healings especially when we have the sense of spiritual understandings and deepenings if we um, look on the deepest spiritual levels then we can work with letting go of old emotional wounds, the past and past lies as that's surfacing to heal. We can work to be emotionally honest. In other words, that spiritual searching must be included in the healing on the emotional levels. And of course, here's the grand trine in water. And so that's what is the potential that can come along here as well. If we're really working to heal emotional wounds from our early environment, from past lives, healing emotional traumas, working for the emotional self-reliance, this is going to allow us to have the commitment with others. It's going to allow us to have that sense of spiritual grounding and purpose and my my life makes sense for me. Now the distortions is stirring all this up and re-imprinting or remaining in the emotional woundedness or the emotional immaturity and wanting to project responsibility out there onto others. I'm the victim of my world. They keep doing this to me. We want to be healing any of those distortions and again, spiritually deepening our understandings of our emotions and its wounding and then the emotional freedom and peace from that when we're looking at who we are and how we heal ourselves emotionally on the deepest levels possible. Kim? Now. Kim? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Robin has yes. a question about the phasal relationship there between Saturn and and uh, Pluto as, as, as you're talking about the spiritual growth. I'm just going to let her kind of chime in, okay? Sure. Hey, Kim, just, just a quick question. The Saturn you had talked about, obviously, the spiritual, you know, ideas you know of course that's what we would be thinking about with Saturn in the 12th house um, but my question is it's entering the balsamic phase so wouldn't we think that way regardless of you know it happens to be 12th house but any house and in other words any combination of the Saturn Pluto anywhere is going to have that sort of feeling that letting go that surrendering process um, uh, you know, just becoming more aware of, of, you know, perhaps of source or spirit or wanting deeper meaning in our life. That was kind of the one question. And then same thing, just the phase of relationship between Saturn and Uranus being the, um, the uh, sexy quadrate, that's entering the disseminating phase. So I was just trying to understand the phases better and how you were relating your explanations to that. Sure. Okay. Um, first of all, you are correct. With Saturn in that waning semi-square to Pluto, which is going into balsamic phase, that is going to lead towards deeper spiritual understandings between structure of consciousness and the soul. How the soul structures consciousness. It's going to have to go through the disillusionments of what no longer works in its consciousness or its world on a soul level. That's going to be true no matter what transiting house Saturn and Pluto are in. I see it emphasized here in the 12th and the 1st in that Saturn in the 12th creates that signature of what no longer makes sense in my world. I've got to have deeper understandings of truth, Sag 12th house. And yet, relative to Pluto and Cap in the first, 
there's going to be some level of rebirthing going on at the same time. First house, rebirthing, Capricorn, manifesting what new manifestations in relative to what we've had to let go of. And so there is going to be kind of almost the revolving door here with this particular house transit of letting go the deeper understandings and then how are we going to manifest anew. Now, let me back up and say that relative to the phasal relationships of any two planets, from last quarter phase to new phase, from 270 to 360 on the circle, they're going to be letting go and having deeper understandings and making peace with karma. At the same time, they start to get the sparks of inspiration to begin anew. And what will happen from last quarter, 270 degrees to the 360 of the conjunction, the new sparks will come in and will kind of want to race ahead and go for it. I mean, just think of any time you have a desire. I want it now. I don't want to be patient with it. And relative to it being 270 to 360, there will be something within the universe that won't let us completely go forward with it or will only let us go forward with it as we get closer and closer to the 360 conjunction and will let us get closer and closer to perhaps starting to bring in new manifestations of the inspirations if we've been cleaning up the past all the way from 270 to 360. So we're talking about the Pisces Aries 12th house first house revolving door and if this is not making sense tell tell Roy if you've got more questions or comments in regards to that. Now Saturn relative to Uranus disseminating phase Disseminating phase is, you know, where we want to learn everything about society. We want to function in society, but then we get um, bored and exhausted with society. Been there, done that, and it leads you in from disseminating phase. It leads you to that last quarter crises in consciousness, and so. What happens with Saturn and Uranus on a generic level is how are you going to continue to function in society when you're getting you don't want to do it anymore. Now moving just in moving from full phase to disseminating phase, there's another factor in there. You're not you're not quite bored you're not bored with it, okay? You, you you're wanting to just function in society. But when you move in, just first move into that disseminating phase, um, which um, 270 minus 45, 225 degrees. When you're just moving into that phase, there's an adjustment with others that comes along. 225 degrees is 15 degrees Scorpio in the natural zodiac. And so there's an outer adjustment with society. You don't get to be full, full phase of yourself. How are you going to make outer adjustments in your world that's coming off of the full phase con in conjunct at 210 degrees? How are you going to make your adjustments out there in society to fully function in society and yet not lose a sense of yourself? So Uranus is the slower moving planet. It's going to run the society factor and Saturn is going to run the self factor between the two of them as a planetary pair. And so Saturn and Sag is going to want to have, you know, security through understanding its role in society, Uranus. And when they make those last quarter sesky squadrate or when they make those sesky squadrate aspects Saturn and its security is going to have to make some type of adjustments to society 
and in practical ways, Uranus in Aries, look at how fast society is changing. Look at all of us from time to time having some, you know, trauma come up in the in in the world, in our life, in our family, in our work, in whatever, and and boom, boy, all of a sudden our insecurity buttons are pushed. You know, up here where I'm at, the price, the plunging price of oil that's been so great in consumers' um, pocketbooks with buying gas, it's just taken the wind right out of the oil boom up here that everybody, that nobody thought anything would happen to that. That's Saturn making those waning sesky squadrates to Uranus and surprise! Your structure of consciousness just got blown to smithereens and people are getting laid off left and right up here. You know, my nephew who works up there went from 80 hours a week to 20 hours a week. And tell me his Saturn and Sag isn't trying to make sense of everything as Uranus and Aries threw him a new curveball. And by the way, um, where Saturn's in his seventh, Uranus in Aries is in his eleventh. So trying, he's trying not to be traumatized by it. So I hope that was a good enough answer. And if if you, there was more questions or comments, you're welcome to, you know, tell Leroy to unmute you or type a question in. And anybody else too, if they want. So to the last of our charts. Here is Saturn Sag 12th as it makes the last quarter squares to Neptune and Chiron Pisces 3rd. Here's Jupiter Virgo in the 9th as it makes the last quarter square to Saturn in the 12th. And then of course Saturn in the 12th is going to square the nodes in the 3rd, 9th Pisces Virgo here. So with the last quarter squares to um, Neptune and Chiron, um, there could be the distortions of feeling lost, ungrounded, identity crisis. There can be a lack of routine, perhaps a need for routine. Uh, you know, what we have is going on here is mutable signs, mutable houses. So everything seems to be always changing and moving. There doesn't seem to be foundation. And what does Saturn want? Not only does it want, you know, the, its consciousness wants structure, it literally wants physical structures to be secure. And so here it is, you know, with so much that it's having to let go of in regards to old realities. You know, if you have Saturn transiting the 12th house, you have a 30-year cycle that you're having to let go of. And so here it is in the third house with Pisces, and nothing can seem stable. It just seems like it's changing all the time. And so there's going to be a crisis in consciousness over, where's my structure? I need to have a little structure. And it's, it's an ebb and flow in that, there needs to be that routine to give one a sense of security as they're going through all these changes. They have to really be making that effort to reach for inner peace in the moment and breathing through the process of life. What can be going on here is the good old truth versus lies factor. And there can be things in our world, in our lives, that we thought were gospel. And we are reaching limitations in our personal beliefs and understandings. And now our world doesn't make sense anymore. There can be a lot of the um, left brain, right brain switching that can go on here. Because Pisces third and Virgo ninth, we're mixing it up in by these houses, so to speak. And so Saturn can have the confusions. It can have the feeling ungrounded. And so there has to be a surrendering here with Pisces into the third of, 
it, when we when the mind starts running, when the worry wart starts running, when okay, one more piece of information, one more fact, one more class, one more detail, one more this, one more that. We just have to s just slow it down and breathe. My Louise Hay quote that I put at the end of these slides. Okay, show me the deepest levels of truth I can understand. Help me make sense of my life. And show me where it is I need to adapt. Where am I needing to change? And how do I have inner peace through my changes? Because what can go on with Jupiter, as it makes these last quarter squares to Saturn, confusion versus clarity, left brain versus right brain, as I said. Again, more surrenderings to this intuition. We can have the worry wart running here. We can have cri Virgo crises mode going here. You know, we can bring up all the sadomasochistic stuff and the need for the healthy boundaries from that. Um, this stuff can bring up self worth and self-love issues here. Again, if we're not, if the left brain is not making peace or acknowledging or relating to right brain and relating to deeper understandings, then, then we just can fly off the handle into confusion and we can you know, drive ourselves crazy worrying about things that we can't control. And so we've really got to be making the efforts with inner peace. Jupiter's in its own house, okay? So it has a sense of intuition here. But with Virgo, it's going to doubt. It's going to worry. It's going to, if, if the self-worth isn't here, the doubt comes in. If deep unconditional love for self isn't here, the worry comes in. We're going to get into the compensations that you know Saturn and Sag can do. We're going to um, get into false self, so to speak, rather than stand in our truth and stand in who we authentically are. Saturn. This is going to be, you know, these aspects are all, by now you probably realize, this T-square with Jupiter, Chiron, Neptune, and Saturn square the nodes, this, these are all very much same um, archetypes that we're having to work our way through. So here we're going to have skipping between a loss of meaning in life and overzealousness. This is this, this this house transit is where we're really wanting to have the the deep spiritual searching for natural law versus religious conditionings. We have to go through adapting here. Have to honor our truth. Have to honor our inner peace. You can have Jupiter up here in Virgo become very critical of others' belief systems, especially in lesser um, uh, evolutionary states. And Saturn and Sag in the 12th here, they can cling to a religious zealousness, as I'm calling it, clinging to, you know, the good old preacher versus teacher syndrome. And so on some deep level, there can be such a sense of confusion or it doesn't make sense as deeper truth and they'll either fall off the deep end into confusion or they'll become very defensive in trying to protect their version of the truth. And what has to take place here is surrendering to Surrendering limitations of truth, surrendering the beliefs that no longer make sense. There needs to be deep questioning. What is my truth and what makes sense for me? And can I stand in my truth and can I stand in my own um, process of searching for inner peace as I ebb and flow through 
letting go of old beliefs that no longer work, and opening up to new ones that do. This North Node Virgo Ninth, there has to be a discernment with truth versus blindly accepting any facts as the ultimate truth. And Saturn's going to have to discern between that and walk that talk or it'll create skip steps with its beliefs. <coughs> that makes sense for everybody um, finishing up with Saturn, Sag through the 12th. Any questions, comments? Oh gosh, all the sadomasochism here, conditioned guilt, natural guilt, all this stuff also is stirred up. And there has to be a discernment of what is truth versus getting so caught up in deep conditioned guilt. You can have somebody doing a number on you projecting their guilt onto you and trying to make you guiltier yet. And so you've got to be able to, again, discern truth. So questions as we're just finishing up here on anything? As I'm waiting, I just, you know, really want to thank all of you who've participated in this series, and I hope it's been most helpful in deepening your expansion of consciousness through Saturn and Sag. And so, here again, my nice, friendly last slide. Saturn and Sag, what's the deepest, broadest level of truth I can understand? I want to know the truth. And of course, Louise Hay, everything I need to know is revealed to me. And everything I need and desire comes to me in my highest and best time-space sequence. All right, everyone, here is that Saturn and Sag series, part one and part two. If you want to look at any of that, I will not have any public classes in March due, or excuse me, February due to traveling the first of the month. I will have my next public class will be the Uranus Pluto waxing squares, and we will check in to see what we can look at moving forward as they move beyond 90 degrees with each other. All right. No more questions, comments? One more time, I thank you all very, very much for wanting to study evolutionary astrology.